first part of the lab we're gonna be doing schema and ta or table level encryption um, in this lab it's optional because it's uh, you don't really need to touch code at all mostly it's the configure at the database level so you can just um, listen through it so um, but but if you want to follow uh, and do it uh, please do so so the first part that we are going to do is we're going to uh, get the project starter here is um, the secure book web application uh, is an application where you um, can um, add books and look at a list of books in a bookstore but you have to log in um, to get into um, the book application so um, here you want to uh, go to to this link and then um, you do um, download zip file here and then you open the application so here I have opened the application um, already so um, just um, the normal um, secure uh, application that we have seen with like security config um, so here this application um, has um, a model um, book uh, with the name author um, rating created at and um, with the UUID and um, we also have the, the user information as well and um, for the application property we use um, H2 um, database in this example so let's take a look at the, the lab here so first we're gonna try to do encryption uh, for the, the H2 database that we use so to create and access the encrypted H2 database you can just simply add the cipher option at the end of the database URL so you can just you know copy this to um, the application so here you have um, the environment variable you can just leave it like that and you add this to the end of the URL um, the colon and cipher equal to AES um, next you have to specify a password so the password here the first one is the password to decrypt and encrypt um, um, database and the second is a user password when you log in here so you can just you know choose any um, password you want here let's say I change it to SA and here I do like um, just just for um, demonstration I can just I'm, I'm just gonna do this just to know that this is a pa file password and then for the user I can just say user password uh, but this is not safe you, you, you know right um, you have to specify like the um, password uh, with like um, at least 12 characters and stuff like that but this is just for demonstration that's it that's all that you have to do when you want to um, encrypt the H2 database so next um, let's run the application okay uh, the um, program start um, uh, without errors so let's run the application and then you can try to um, sign up and then you can try to uh, like add book let me try to sign up and then log in and then you can add or you know any let's try to add some book okay here and um, to um, now you can try to take a look at the H2 database so let's go to um, the H2 console here 
uh, at the um, URL, you have to specify, uh, in addition to specify the name of the database, you have to specify the option as well. So we have to add the option cipher um, equal to AES at the end of um, the URL. And then um, I have changed username to SA. For the password, you have to use both file password and user password and with the space in the middle as well. So copy um, the password as is, like this, um, to um, password um, field here, and then you connect. So uh, the password that they are going to use, they're going to use the, the file password part for encrypt and decrypt, and the, the second part is for um, to, to log in, right? So here, if you take a look at the user, um, you're going to see an uh, decrypted data. So the data here is already decrypted when you try to select from the user. And if you take a look at the book, um, it's, it's going to be the same thing. When you run, you're going to see, you know, the, it's like a clear text data. When you do table level or schema level um, database encryption, um, keep in mind that the database level encryption, it encrypt the database file at rest. It means that when you, when an attacker try to attempt to access a database file without using a DBMS, the attacker will find the encrypted file. But if us, um, as a developer, we know database password, right? So you have um, um, like a full access or, or a right full um, like, like um, a right to access the database. And then you use like the associated database to um, to access. Then the DBMS will decrypt the file um, for us when we when we try to select data. So we will see the decrypted data. It might not look like it has been encrypted, but it has already. But when we try to select um, the data, is decrypted for us to read. Right. So, but um, when when it say that database encrypted at rest, meaning if you if an attacker try to access the database file without using DBMS to do selection, he or she will find the encrypted um, data. Right. So um, this is the difference from the column level. If you do column um, level encryption at the code level. Uh, when you take a look at the database, it will be encrypted. So it's even safer at the column level because even us developer will not be able to see it. It has to be like the right um, the the business um, who are able to see. But us, uh, when we have an access to the database, we cannot even read the data. We will we will see that in in the next lab. So in addition to the S2 encryption, next let's take a look at the my SQL encry encryption, how we do it. So here what we are gonna, gonna do is that we're gonna use the same book application, but we're gonna change from S2 to my SQL database. So uh, what we have to do is that we have to add a dependency to POM file to add um, a my SQL driver to our Spring Boot application. And then we have to change the configuration in the application property file. We're gonna change URL and driver um, from H2 to my SQL. So here, this is what we are gonna do. And then we have to change the dialect to the my SQL as well. So um, let's do that. So here, I'm just gonna stop application and um, I'm gonna go to POM file. So what we are going to do is that I'm going to delete. Actually, if, if you want to keep H2 for um, test or development, you can do that. And here, so after H2, what you can do is that you add the MySQL here, right? And then um, reload the project. Next, we're going to change um, the application property. So here we will not uh, need this anymore. 
because we don't need to access the H2 console. So you, you just delete it or you can just, you know, um, comment it out. Next, we're going to change the URL. So for the URL, uh, for the DB, for H, uh, MySQL, it's JDBC MySQL. And you have to specify the address. The address here um, can be localhost if the database run on um, your own computer. But if um, it's run on a server, you have to specify um, a domain name or an IP address. And usually the port for MySQL, the default is 3306. But if you um, change the port for your uh, MySQL server, you have to change it accordingly. For, for here, uh, for my own computer, I leave it at um, the default port. And um, this is like the, the DB, the database that I am going to be using. So I'm just going to be copying this um, to the URL here. And then uh, for the driver class, uh, I'm going to use the MySQL driver um, instead of S2. So copy. So for the username, um, actually you should um, um, configure and, and add another user here. Just to be quick, I'm just going to use root for now. But when you do an actual implementation, um, actual development, you should um, add like a user for this particular app. And then you specify um, the password to, to log in to um, this application. So uh, for me, I, I, I use the password, um, simple password, um, ABCD1234. So this is the password to log into the server with the user root. And um, you also have to change the Hibernate dialect. Um, so that the JPA knows that it connects to my SQL, not H2 anymore. So we're just gonna um, copy this and then replace it. This is H2, right? So the the so um, the the behind the scene for JPA is that it changed um, the entity um, and then create like an an my SQL uh, like an SQL statement for us. So it needs to know uh, which database to use and which, um, you know, SQL that I like to use. So now I change it to my SQL. Um, the current version is um, 8. Uh, and next, you have to, um, you know, run an SQL server. If you don't have it, um, you have to download the uh, my SQL server using this um, link. So in this link, you choose um, the, um, the operating system for your own computer and then you um, download my, my SQL server and then you install it. You can just follow um, the on-screen instruction to, to install um, the, the server. And so this server, it just, uh, it just runs server. But if you want to access um, the my SQL, you need a tool, you know, to access it. The tool to access has many, um, several options. Um, my SQL itself has my SQL workbench. Um, so this applicant is quite nice. I use it and um, I have no problem with it. So you can just download it and, and in install it. Um, another option is um, the Beaver. Um, the Beaver is great because it's um, a tool to help us access a lot of um, DBMS, not just my SQL. It can use to access um, Postgres SQL. Um, DB2 as well, so it's pretty neat. Um, uh, so choose any two you think you, you, you like it better. For me, I used uh, my SQL workbench here. So uh, once you um, install and set up, make sure that the, the server is on. Um, uh, for, for Windows, you can just Google how to do it. For Mac, uh, uh, for Mac, you can just go to the system preference and there's my SQL um, icon here. When you click at it, um, if it's already on, it's going to be green. If it's not, you can start my SQL server. You have to enter the password to make sure that um, you, you have like an admin um, access. Here, you, I, I start my um, SQL server. 
and then next you can um, start my SKL workbench so I'm just gonna start my SKL workbench okay when you start my SKL workbench you have to add a connection here I have I, I have um, a connection for um, my SCL Docker, um, but I also want um, to have an access for my local OS. So I, uh, so this is the connection in any name you want. Uh, I just want to um, differentiate between like the local OS and Docker, and um, the username. When when you set up uh, my SQL Server, it asks you for the root username and root password. Here I access as root, and then um, I. You have to um, type in the password that you set up uh, when you set up the MySQL um, server. And then you um, click OK. Or you can test connection first if, um, if everything is OK um, successfully, then you uh, click OK. And then you, you can kind of log in. So once you log in, this is like an empty database. Um, but here, um, for our application, you want to create a, a, um, a schema book um, in this um, setting for the application.properties. In addition to specify the domain name and a port, you have to specify um, the database that you want to use in this application. So my, my schema or my database is book. So I want, so you need to add um, a book database here, a book schema. So to add that, let me uh, take a look. So to add, so after you connect to my SQL server, um, uh, if you use my SQL workbench, you have to um, click um, the add schema button is right here. For if you use DB, um, um, DB, DB ver, um, you have to find you know, um, a way to create schema. So when you click this button, it's gonna ask you, ask you to name the schema. You name it book. Um, the same as um, book here and then you click um, apply uh, when you click apply it's gonna show you that the schema um, actually create schema book and then semicolon let, let, let me show you so what we do is that we have to click add schema here and then the schema name you um, username book and then you click apply so once you click apply um, the default is going to create schema book sim simply like this. But if you want to um, encrypt the database, what you have to do is that you have to add default encryption Y at the end. Here it's going to tell database um, DBMS to encrypt all the table in this schema for us. So you copy this and then place it um, after book like this and then you click apply and then you click close so now you create um, a book schema here with empty table okay uh, next you can just run the application uh, because you set your application to um, um, DDL auto DDL auto means that it will create a table for you um, so you don't really need to create a table book or table user um, prior to um, running the application you can just start off with an empty database but if the database or if the table is already there um, it will uh, not create anymore okay so now um, let's run the application Okay, now the applicant starts successfully. So um, next, what we are gonna do is that we're gonna try to sign up and add some book. Okay, let's sign up. Just gonna sign up as before. I'm gonna try to log in.
and then add some book. Now the book has already been added. So to make sure that um, the data has already been added to my SQL, um, let's take a look at it. So um, to do it, you can just, you know, um, um, select, um, use the book database and then select data from book. So let's take a look. So here you um, come to, you can create SQL, just use, uh, or use the tab query one. You um, use, you know, normal SQL um, query, use book, and then you select everything from book. And then you run. Here, this is the data that I have just added, um, the Sapien book. Um, as um, the same as you have seen in H2, right, that when you use um, DBMS to select data from table, the data has already been decrypted for us because you have um, username and password, right? You have um, um, uh, a right access to um, the data. So you can, so the database, DBMS, encrypt and decrypt the data for us. So we, we don't really see it. But if the attacker um, go read the file itself without using DBMS, it will not uh, see um, the, the clear text. It will see the encrypted data. So your data is safe. Um, in... Um, my SQL, you can actually check whether um, the schema or table is encrypted by running this command. So it will select from like the information schema table um, to see whether the create option is encryption. So you're gonna see that um, book and user, you know, is already encrypted. So let's try to run this. So here, the both um, uh, table in book schema, um, the encryption option is yes, because you um, set um, the entire schema to be encrypted. Right? So this kind of proof that your data is encrypted at rest, but as uh, when you use DBMS, you, you don't see it. Right? You know, again, keep in mind that the database level encryption encrypt database file at rest. So attacker, if the attacker attempt to access the file without using DBMS, they will see an encrypted file. But us with um, an access right, when you use DBMS correctly, um, the DBMS will decrypt the file for us and we will see decrypted data. Okay, um, so that's it um, for um, the lab. Uh, to encrypt data at schema or table level. Hopefully you kinda um, understand it a little bit more because you get your hand um, dirty a bit more. If you want to, um, but there's a lot more to it, you know, there's a lot um, of other DBMS that we have not um, um, tried to, um, to, to run, like Postgres DB2 um, and that. Um, will let you read it in the future when, when, when you need it. But hopefully you understand the general concept and you can, you know, read um, like the instruction for each DBMS to be able to encrypt the data.